All right, supposedly I'm live now. I'm just gonna just wait a second to see if I can get some watchers coming and we will proceed. Um, yeah, honey, don't go in there. There's black widows in there. It's not good. No bueno. All right, let's see. So, I started this chat today for the purpose of letting you guys know some news that I sold my 2016 Intense Tracer. So what I wanted to do today is talk about the bikes that I have ridden over the past year and I rated them from like, I read over the past year I've demoed eight bikes and I've rated them and put them in, well number one is this, number two is this, da 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 da. So we're gonna kinda go through those and just talk about my experience riding the bikes and maybe potentially what might be my next purchase when it comes to buying a bike. So feel free to ask questions and do all that stuff like that because it gets these live events going and I start, you know, right when they start, they always feel awkward. It's like, okay, here we go. But I got my list. So today we're gonna just, um, we're gonna get to it. If you guys have any questions and like, you know, about the bike or about maybe you're thinking about maybe purchasing a bike and you might not know if you should or shouldn't and you guys have any questions like that you want me to answer just let me know and we can talk we can totally talk about that so all right so here, here we go we're gonna get into this so I've demoed this year over the I started this channel about six months ago and hey cinder here's my dog my trail dog my future trail dog right here I'm mean, using training right now he's a Weimariner all right so um, I have a list here. It's a Hallmark list that looks horrible, but <laughs> they're on there. It'll guide me. So, again, I sold my bike. I sold my bike today. And we're going to be talking about what bike I'm going to get for the future. And I'm going to rate the different demo bikes that I've demoed over the past year. So, again, I've been doing this channel for about six months. Um, I've demoed eight bikes um, of certain select bikes that I really was interested in potentially getting myself um, so let's get into it so all right so number eight comes in as the giant trance 2 I this bike was I, I did this bike because I heard it was a very good budget bike and I wanted to see how it lived up to the other bikes that I've demoed I like I had just recently like demoed Yeti I done some Santa Cruz stuff um, with the with the Bronson and the high tower and you know I wanted to see where this bike stacked up against them I thought I could maybe was a little bit prepared to kind of evaluate whether or not that bike um, if it could make the cut you know what I mean because it was like I, I, my friend got it for around 2400 bucks and I wanted to see how it stacked up against the bikes that were 10,000 you know or I mean 8,000 6,000 just to see where it was at you know um, so number eight in last place comes a giant trans too but that's not I'm not I didn't put it there to bag on it but if you really if I'm legitly like rating it and what I like thought about the bike um, intense recluse elite ooh Roberto hey man um, yeah that that is definitely in my top right there doesn't get me excited meh oh so I forgot what you, you said something about getting you excited I didn't see it sorry I faded oh wait all right, so the Giant Trance 2, like I said, it was a good bike for the budget. But in terms of, and I really enjoyed it as a budget bike. Yes, Roberto, the, the, inten the Intense Recluse is very, like, it, it is a fun bike. I mean, it blew me away, but I'll get to that later um, on the Intense Recluse. That's coming up. I'll be talking about that one. But yes, the Giant Trance 2 was a budget bike. It was a great bike for the price, but is it something that, a guy like me is going to just get all excited about and go goo goo over I mean I got this channel now it's growing I'm excited about it I got plans and you know I really want to um, you, you know I want something that's gonna basically I can take it wherever if I decide to collaborate with some youtuber who's really good or fast I want a bike that's gonna get me up that hill as fast as I can I want a bike that's gonna get me at the bottom of the hill as fast as I can so number eight in last place comes the uh, the giant trance and Dan 
I am still trying to get my hands on a YT. I have never tried YT yet, so that is always a potential chance, you know, because I don't know or not if I like it. I hear a lot of great things. Um, I hear that the <laughs> second led Yeti, um, that was your best ride, the Yeti. <laughs> um, I've never, uh, yeah, the Jeff C. Um, yeah. It, Dan, you said you tried the Jeff C today. How did you have you demoed any other bikes? Like, what do you think? You know, of the Jeff C compared to like like Yeti. Um, so yeah, but anyway, number eight comes a giant trance, and and number seven is going to surprise a lot of people. Um, but I number seven, I had to put the Yeti SB five C. And that's just, I think, a personal thing for me. Um, like I was saying, I'm 5'6", and the sizings for me are just so off on the Yeti. I feel like the small is too small, and I feel like the... Uh... <laughs> um, I... <laughs> Why you F? <laughs> um, I haven't really demoed any other bikes I sat on Yeti once, but honestly, the Jesse felt more playful. I only climbed a bit on it and then took it on a jump but it was super great yeah you know I, I I really need to get my hands on a freaking YT I mean you know uh, what do you call it uh Aaron Gwen rides them you know what I mean like if he likes them then damn it must be a good bike you know um, but anyway the Yeti SB5 came in seventh place because the sizing and then if you look at the small they like they make it like a you know how like the top tubes on girl bikes go like dig down a little bit for like your crotch area or whatever so you can fit in it better like it's seriously like it looks like a girl bike. You want to get a small of a Yeti? I don't know about the SB5. I know that is for the, but the the I rode the Da Vinci Django and that was a solid bike. Yeah, I haven't tried a Da Vinci yet. That is definitely one on my list too that I'm potentially thinking about. But yeah, the sizing is just off on the Yeti, and just for me personally, is not something that's pretty much in my radar to buy. Um, it, it the Yeti was SB5 was actually at the top of my list at one point. I was like, I want a Yeti. Um, you know, I'm really excited about the bike. You know, what's it? Richie Rude who's winning all the races and he rides Yeti. And I love that like baby blue. I used to do like, not carpentry, but I like, restored furniture and stuff for fun. And I always used to paint the furniture like baby blue. I just thought it was cool, you know? And I wanted that specific color, you know what I mean? When I saw, so I fell in love with the Yeti. Um, at sight, at first sight, I fell in love with the Yeti. But when I rode it, it just felt, when I rode the medium, it just felt way too big. The rear chain stay was just too big for me. It didn't feel very maneuverable. Um, I just think my sizing is off for me to really enjoy that bike and to get it to open up. So in number, in the seventh place, Yeti uh, SB5 comes in. Now, in sixth place, I, Roberto, uh, <laughs> in sixth place, um, the Intense Tracer, the 2017 Intense Tracer comes in, uh, wait, so it's eight, seven, six, yeah, so in sixth place, the Intense Tracer comes in. Um, an orange bike. I just don't know where to get orange bikes around here. I think they might be like a UK brand, but I'm not sure you can correct me on that. But yeah, the in, in the Intense Tracer 2017 came in uh, sixth place. Um, and that's not to say it was a bad bike. I had a, the, la, the last three bikes that I just said, like I had a pretty easy time going now. I didn't really like them, but it was, I had a really hard time putting the Intense Tracer in uh, sixth place. Um, because it was a really, really good bike. Um, yeah, and I know the Super Elite for the the, the 2017 Intense Tracer is light. Um, so, I mean, and I didn't get, to be fair, I tried a expert build, I believe, of the Intense Tracer. So, in terms of expert build, I wasn't really too thrilled. It was a little too heavy for me. But, however, I may, I may have liked it if... I'm sure I would have liked it in a higher model, but the problem with me, I want the bike that I want to get, I want it to have the geometry more built for climbing and sustained climbing. When I rode the, the Tracer, I kind of felt like the geometry, like my seat was kind of in the back. It was too slanted. So here are the pedals down here and the seats up here. And on like enduro bikes, they're typically like more slanted like this. The seat's up here and it's, and then when you get to more climbing, it kind of straightens up a little bit, I guess, from what I understand when it comes to geometries. And I just wanted something to feel confident about in the sense that um, it's it was built for more than just getting uphill successfully. I wanted something to, that's gonna just climb freaking 
awesome, you know, and uh, that I really enjoyed. So that was what was really hard for me with the Yetis, because I'm telling you right now, even though the Yetis were in last place, I can tell you right now, even though the sizing was off, the Yetis were by far a better climber than this whole list. Uh, the, the, the Yetis climb with their switch infinity little mechanism thing they were legitly the best like climbers I've ever ridden on so need you guys need to note that um, so it's very important if you guys are thinking about a Yeti to definitely get out there and try one yes they uh, trail features they are a beast uphill I have to agree I I remember when I got on the Yeti SB5C it was kind of like it, it was it, it was it was a bike that was I, I wasn't too fit at that time, and I'm still not fit, but I mean, I was fit to her. Um, so, I tell you what, I demoed it in Abyss Mojo 3, and honestly, that bike blew me away. Um, you can run plus and all that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've never tried Abyss, but I've been hearing a lot of stuff about Abyss lately. Um, there's a guy who has a channel called Ride, Rate, and Review, and he is a great channel, and he, um, he rides in Abyss as his main bike, but he's in another country, so I don't know who you know rides abyss or whatever i mean who demos them or whatever but um yeah so the yeti was a great climber but the intense tracer for me in terms of what bike i'm intending to purchase the intense tracer came in sixth place so the next bike on the list um the next bike on the list down so that would be the, in fifth place <clears throat> is the yeti sb5 no yeti sb6 I really enjoyed the Yeti SB6. Um, I didn't really get to let that thing open up too much when I, I tried it out at Worldwide Cyclery, and I really, really liked the the feel of it going uphill. I liked it going downhill, but I still had that same problem that the sizing was just not there. If you shave it, if you shave it, might help you with your climbing. It might the aerodynamics, man. I have like a, if I don't know. Last time I shaved. I had like the Johnny Depp like indentions in my face and you know that arrow just like oh, whoosh, whoosh. somebody just left a comment right now that uh, my aerodynamics would be better if I shaved so that's why the, that comment <laughs> um, so but yeah the the Yeti SB5 felt like a great bike I, I loved it if I was like Bruce Wayne and I was like the Bruce Wayne of bikes in my garage I would have a Yeti SB6 <laughs> I'm sorry oh my god I thought you were really you really meant shave oh no well that's what I mean I meant shave like shave I don't know I, I we might be lost at this point but yes the Yeti SB5 is in fifth place to me I really liked it uh, I, I wrote it in Thousand Oaks I demoed it from Worldwide Cyclery and they uh, they really hooked it up dialed it in for me um, use full face helmet well I got a full face helmet it's right here it's cushion <laughs> Did you see one of the guys at Worldwide Cyclery cut down the seat? Uh, I missed that comment. Oh, maybe if I press the comments, it'll actually pop up. Um, okay, whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, the, so yeah, it was good. Uh, just got here. What's up? What about the Specialized Enduro? <laughs> the Specialized Enduro. Man, it is... If I'm going to drop money on a bike, I'm kind of in the place right now where I want to try bikes that are not crazy known you know like not that not that it's not crazy known but something you don't see every day on a trail i'm seeing a lot of specialized lately i'm seeing a lot of giants i'm seeing a lot of treks and to be honest i don't feel like spending a, some grands putting some grands down on a bike that everybody has you know so that's kind of where i feel about uh, the specialized marine Mar marin wolf ridge you know what uh, what is that i wish i wish that you guys could like chat pictures because i want to trying to remember what that was the Marin Wolf Ridge it's on the tip of my brain picturing it um, but anyway so in fifth place like I said so if you guys are just joining in I just noticed right now that a bunch of people just came in on the chat um, I'm going down Nolly Warden Carbon Playboy the bike shreds <laughs> so what this video is I'm literally going through the eight demo bikes that I demo this year and I'm going to be talking about potentially the bike that I could be buying and I've rated um, my top eight out of the bikes that I've demoed of um, my top eight bikes that I've demoed and I'm going down so number eight was a giant trance number uh, six no, I'm sorry number seven was the Yeti SB6 number six is the Yeti SB5 and number five and in fifth place the intense tracer came in okay so I just got done talking about the intense tracer like I said the geometry was just a little bit more to enduro for me it had 165 inches of travel I mean like 
that was more than my current trance. Like, my current trance had 160. But, I mean, it's not that much more, but you look good in intense recluse elite. You know what? I think the intense recluse elite would look good on me, too. I'm not, I'm just saying. You know what? Hold up, guys. I need to go check on my baby. Make sure she's, she's chill over here. It has a react suspension. It has 170 millimeters travel. I believe it. Honey, say hi. What are you doing? Say hi. What are you doing? Say hi. <laughs> All right. So, um, that's kind of where that's at um so the next bike that i demoed um that came in all right so fourth place fourth place of the bikes that i demoed is uh the high tower i demoed the high tower um it was the 27.5 plus even though i would never buy a 27.5 plus like in that sense i guess it could go last place because i would never buy a plus size bike but to tell you the truth that thing just freaking handled amazingly like i i don't know i just i was able to go really fast on it i felt like the bike was aggressive even though it didn't look aggressive it felt aggressive you know and i'm sure like i can only imagine putting 29ers on that thing um i wish i got over my 50 10. <laughs> uh, the thing feels so planted it's kind of strange almost um trail uh Trail features, what feels so uh, planted? Are you talking about the High Tower? High Tower has two different models. Now one with longer travel called the LT. Oh, I gotta, you know what? I gotta look that look up, look that up because um, I'm actually gonna be potentially demoing a 29er pretty soon of the High Tower. Potentially, maybe. There's some things that might stop that from happening. That other things that might happen that might be cool, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, Trail features the High Tower. Then yes. So yes, that bike. Um, in fourth place comes the high tower. I felt that it climbed well. Um, I did feel tired on the climbing because of the, the 27.5 plus. I can tell because I right before I rode that bike, I rode the Bronson. Roberto, blah. I don't know what's going blah to, but yeah. <laughs> oh, um, so the high tower, um, it, it, I tried the Bronson and the Bronson climbed, I felt like amazing. So um, when I went to the actual high tower, um, Bronson is super comfortable and balanced for anything. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I'll talk about the Bronson in a second. Um, the high tower, um, again, it climbed great. I got tired on it. The, the wheels felt a little too fat. You know what I mean? I did feel the weight, but all in all, that thing descended like a monster and it, it, it could climb. You know what I mean? It had the geometry to make me climb over things like feeling comfortable. What does anyone think of the giant trance or trance two as a newcomer um i'm just saying i just talked about the giant trance and that was actually last place but that was only because i'm grading it with these amazing thousands of thousands of dollar bikes the giant's trance two was actually um uh, it, it was it was a good budget bike i would recommend the giant trance two to anybody who's looking for something that comes with a dropper post that's boost ready um and freaking uh you know the only thing about the giant trans 2 that if you watch my video I couldn't stand the stem was too long and the handlebars are far too narrow It was like I felt like I was riding my dad's old mountain bike from like the 90s or something like that um, It was very very odd. So I The giant trans 2 was just in that sense of blah because it didn't even come ready He did the cockpit didn't even come ready. So I'm just wasn't wasn't feeling it um, but again in fourth place came the high tower and it was very very uh, it, like I said I just felt comfortable on it everywhere how much did your wife allow you to spend um, you don't have to answer um, my wife doesn't let me spend much I don't have much money to spend to tell you the truth um, this new bike that I'm getting um, I have I have been working really hard to put some things in place in a business sense to get a bike that I wanted, but to get it at a decent, very decent price. Um, so I don't have all this money to spend and my wife, you know, and I had to be like, hey babe, I'm gonna get this bike or potentially get this bike or that bike, but I'm going in it doing this thing to kind of make it, you know, affordable. And I'm, you know, now that I've started this channel and I've gotten to over a thousand subscribers, you know, People have been, you know, after they've seen the channel, they're willing to like work with me. So, you know, I've been talking to different people, um, trying to work something out, trying to work a deal. Because if I'm riding a bike, like 
I like I run into like I am now running into people on the trail that like dude you're MTB dropping and I'm like what the crap you know what I mean he's like and I've several times it's happened over the past like uh like you know month or month and a half or two you know where the channel's kind of really kind of had a little growth spurt uh, people have been like knowing who I, I'm just at a little over a thousand subscribers and you know the you know, it, it's getting, a, the name's getting around in my local area. I'm like, it's cool. So I'm like, that's gotta be worth something. So I've been kind of working with different shops to kind of figure out what bike to potentially get, you know what I mean? And who is willing to work with me. But like I said, I can't, I, I can't sell out. That's why I narrowed it down to a top three because I'm not gonna sell out to somebody who's gonna give me a good deal over the bike that I'm actually looking for. So, um, I, I had it had to be a bike that I could truly like that I could truly like recommend to you guys and that you guys could truly feel um, Comfortable, you know, I'm not, not you guys truly feel comfortable that you guys would know that like I've ridden all these bikes and like You know, it's you know, I, this is what I think of it um, So I don't know there, there, there's that so um, We'll see what happens. It's just all gonna be about How it works out, but I mean I have my top three bikes that I'm more than likely gonna it's gonna be those so in number three comes the Santa Cruz Bronson the Santa Cruz Bronson just oh my gosh that thing just blew me away um, I after I rode the Santa Cruz Bronson um, good luck with this channel and everything else hey thank you Peter that's awesome man thank you um, the Santa Cruz Bronson blew me away so I was kind of like you know I, after I ridden that one I was starting to think I'm like okay maybe I'll get the blue one because I didn't want to get the black one because every I you know I'm like a huge fan of BKXC Brian Kennedy and I didn't want to get the exact same bike that he got you know what I mean so that kind of took a little bit away from me so I was just like uh, I love I was like I didn't want to like the bike I really didn't why are you selling your tracer have the same bike and love it um, I sold my 2016 tracer because I'm suggestions with speaking it true um, I missed that comment, um, but um, the reason why I'm selling, I sold my 2016 Tracer is because I'm looking for something that's more efficient in the climbing, and I wanted something that's lighter, and I wanted something that I just, I felt that I could, uh, I wanted, after riding all these different bikes that I've ridden, I've noticed that certain bikes made me ride better, and certain bikes made me um, use better technique so that I can ride that bike better. Um, like the Intense Tracer Elite that I rode was so dang fast that it literally caused me to pull out all my good, yeah, hey, what's up MTV Savant, what's up man? Um, the, what do you call it, the, uh, it was so fast that it caused me to utilize my braking in the right way. It caused me to um, get in the right attack position. It was just, it just picked up so much speed. So. I wanted a bike that I felt like was going to take me as a rider to the next level. I want to grow as a rider, I want to get better as a rider, I want to do races one day. You know, I want to incorporate races in this channel. I'm all about this channel. This channel is all about taking mountain bike riding from just nothing, you know, it just came into my life a year ago and to taking it to something that's grows, you know what I mean? So I'm all about getting in, I want to get into races, I want to show you guys that perspective, I want to show you guys what it takes. Who cares about what BKXE has, get what you like, <laughs> can you hook up? Uh, was sick de you could hook it up with sick details no you're right you know what I mean and honestly if I honestly rode the uh, Santa Cruz Bronson and it was the best bike that I had ridden and I felt that it was gonna take me to that next level I would honestly go with the Santa Cruz Bronson I would have no other choice um, but to tell you the truth that's something that the Santa Cruz Bronson doesn't have going for it I don't necessarily like the way it looks it's not a bad looking bike it actually is a very amazing beautiful bike I just I could see you on a bronzer for sure I just don't it just wasn't it just doesn't look like I'm a I I'm a California boy I like freaking straight up like hot rod looking stuff and you know I like something to look aggressive and I just felt that the Bronson just didn't look that aggressive to my taste I guess so that was kind of what kind of was steering me away from pulling the uh, you know well, I haven't pulled any anything yet I still don't know what bike I'm gonna get necessarily so I know it's between three so we're gonna see I'm looking at the Yeti since I struggle at climbs and since I am taller person Yeti it fits me well honestly if I was a tall person I'd go with I'd probably be buying a Yeti right now no joke if I was a tall person I would buy a Yeti I love the way it looks climbs amazing and it's an aggressive feeling bike you know it doesn't necessarily look that aggressive but it legitly will get you 
you know, up that hill and it will get you down. And it's tried, true, and tested. Um, okay, so moving on. So in second place, guys. So this we're getting. I'm going through this list pretty fast, but it's okay. So in second place is the Evil Calling. The Evil Calling. I was very skeptical about the Evil Calling because, like I said, I'm short. And when I looked at Evil's website, it said that the medium was recommended to somebody who's five eight, and I'm five six. So I was like, what? Their medium is recommended to a guy who's five eight? Like. That's that's unheard of. Like any medium that I've ever heard of that runs high, like even Yeti, they say they recommend their medium to somebody who's five seven. But for some reason on Evil's website, they recommend the medium to guys five eight. So I was thinking, gosh dang it, this bike's probably gonna feel like a large to me. Um, I've really been looking forward to it, and you know I'm probably and I knew and the small was not available for me to demo. Still jelly, you got your hands on an Evil. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't, there's only two places in, I think, California that have evil. So, I mean, I was pretty blessed to get that for sure. Um, but I was very skeptical about the evil. But when I got on it, I completely forgot that I was concerned about the sizing of it. So, it didn't feel big. It actually felt like my tracer in the sense that it was small. Um, fireworks got to go. All right, all right, uh, dad, and have fun. Have, have a good one, man. Uh, yeah, thank you for supporting the channel, by the way, man. You've just been, your comments and everything have been really appreciating and stuff like that. So thanks, man. Um, have fun on those fireworks. Um, but yeah, the evil was just, uh, that's a really good sign. Fit is king. Yeah, so the evil fit me very well, being a guy who's 5'6", and it was a medium. Um, and, uh, you know, so I would go with evil all day. Um, if I it is it's a very potential chance of me getting an evil and worldwide cyclery They've priced their stuff very well um, when it comes to their bikes. Um, I was very surprised the bike I actually rode they said they were like it was like only like four thousand five hundred dollars and I was like That thing had pretty much. I don't know how they said it was that much, but I'm hoping I wasn't wrong, but he was saying it was like 47 or 4,800 bucks. That actual Yeti, I mean, that actual evil that I uh, calling that I demoed. Um, so it climbed. And so let's first talk about climbing with that bike. Um, it climbed. It didn't climb. It didn't blow me away. I wasn't like, oh my gosh. It's like the Bronson blew me away when it came to climbing. I think I did some of my longest climbing on the Bronson and it was able to keep going, which blew me away. But the evil. I, I felt it was good. I mean, the climbing was right at that point to where I'm like, okay, I'm looking for a bike that climbs. I can see myself buying this bike. So it, it, it did climb fairly well. It's a short, their, their calling is actually the shorter of the travel of bikes that they have. So it is more on the, uh, I guess, all mountain bike category of bikes. So it was a very good bike in that sense. And it was kind of built and geared towards the, you know, climbing and descending, uh, whole compromise thing and I did feel that the uh, the cranks they weren't too like I said um, you know when you have a bike that climbs well the seat and the cranks are kind of like more like this and when you get more enduro the seat goes back and then the cranks go a little forward um, and I felt that it was a very good uh, geometry hey buddy again this is my trail dog right here uh, his name is sender because he's gonna send it one day <laughs> we're gonna go down the trails um, so that was um so yeah it was the evil sender <laughs> gary gary says sender um so number one can you guys guess what number one is is what's the only bike i have not mentioned yet can anyone do it can anyone can anyone say it what's the number one bike that came in number one well anyway i don't see it popping up right now so three two one okay no one said it all right so and number one the number one bike that i demoed that just freaking blew me away mtv savant you're right it was the recluse however i demoed two different recluses i demoed a uh it was a expert build i believe and i demoed an elite the expert build that i that it was my very first bike that i ever demoed so uh, in the recluse, I replaced the 32T for 28 and it's client. Oh, okay. Maybe I should potentially think about that. But again, the number one bike that I rode this year was the intense recluse elite. And the foundation one that I demoed was, it was, it was a good bike. It was like I said, but it was just heavy too, a little too heavy for what I'm looking for. Um, but, and it didn't necessarily, um, it, it blew me. Uh, you've done an intense, try something different. 
you've done an intense stress. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not trying, uh, I'm going for a calling <laughs> um, that bikes light and climbs well. Um, yeah, see, intense, I am all about color. Well, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, I literally graded the bike based on, I'm not I'm saying I'm gonna get the intense recluse elite yet. I'm not saying that, it's not for sure. It's not in, it's not in writing or anything yet. Um, so, that but that is right now I can tell you that was the first bike I legitly got on and I was like this bike is different than any other bike I've ever ridden <laughs> and it is faster than any other bike I've ever ridden it it took me to speeds and it, it that I've never gotten on on other bikes um, I, I, I ride um, I've ridden several of my demo bikes that I have demoed on uh, a trail called distortion and I distinctly felt a difference with the Intense Recluse really. Um, it is a fast bike. It's very, see, and I have the Intense, I just sold my Intense 2016 Intense Tracer and it's an aggressive bike. And the cool thing about the Intense Tracer Elite, the Intense, I'm sorry, the Intense Recluse, it is built for, the, the, the frame is an enduro frame. Basically, you got enduro geometry going there. Yeah, I love my intense recluse elite Roberto. Um, it, it's built for that, but it has the shorter travel, so it's better for the climbing and everything. And actually, the uh, geometry of the bike as well, though, is has a very good, you know, uh, pedal to seat ratio. I just made that up right now. I don't know if it's called pedal to seat, but it's not. It doesn't really feel. I feel like I'm over the pedals. So since that, I feel like I'm over the pedals because like a lot of enduro bikes like this, the pedals are down here and then the seats up here. And the further that it's more that it's like this, the harder it is to pedal. But with the intense Recluse Elite, I really felt that it was just a nice. Um, it, it felt like I was over the pedals. So when I would go up stuff, when I would go up like rocks and all that stuff like that it really really felt like if you get the calling you'll be able to ride just like phil metz it, you know what if that was true i would be there today picking up the evil calling this wouldn't be i sold my bike video it would be i sold my i bought a new bike and i'm gonna ride like phil metz tomorrow <laughs> uh dude's a monster i he is one of the only guys i can actually watch just to watch their like his his videos his gimbal videos or whatever just blow me away because of how fast and crazy everything looks because you know i see how slow i go and then i look at phil i'm like oh my gosh the guy's a madman the dude is good the dude is good i mean i'm sure you know he could if he wanted to stay in like the pro circuit he could do some awesome things um but then again i've never been in the pro circuit so what do i really know um so anyway but yeah the intense recluse had a good pet good pedal feel um, I wanted, like I said, I wanted something with shorter travel because that just goes hand in hand with better climbing. The less travel you have, technically the stiffer it's gonna be. Um, when are you getting a new bike? I'm hoping to get a new bike next week sometime. I'm hoping to get a new bike by next week. So hopefully that'll happen and I'll probably do another live video. I'm not sure, we will see. Um, but, uh, what? Rayleigh Chopper was the best bike ever when we were 10 years old in the 70s. I'm 43, so change my bikes for now. <laughs> I think um, I think I'm assuming that's an old bike that you're talking about there. The the OG bikes. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, uh, I'm right now. Bikes are more similar than this dissimilar these days. Yes, they are MTB Savant. Most people base their decisions are based on fit, design, and reputation. And MTB Savant. I'm glad you brought that up because that is something that I would like to talk about um, because after trying all these bikes I can tell you right now that a lot of the bikes do feel more similar than not you know what I mean what do you hear everybody saying They're lower slacker like everybody just making everything lower and slacker and if you don't know what slacker is it's like picture the front wheel like so here's this like here's a here's a bike I guess you know here's the front wheel the more the front wheel sticks out is the slacker it is and obviously lower means lower lower to the ground so lower and sl everything's going lower and slacker and a lot of the bikes feel similar they're all being built around to do the same dang thing and like he says honestly my preferences my one of my big motivating factors is that it looks cool because if it doesn't look cool I don't want to get on it you know what I mean if it doesn't look cool I don't want to be seen on it you know, I, I want something that I look at and just motivates me to get my butt up, get out and ride, you know, so 
there's that. So anyway, guys, um, this has been a good live chat. I don't know how much longer I'm going to keep it going. I do agree with you about all the companies going the same place. Yeah, they are. They really are. I was really impressed about, I can't remember what the bike is called, but they just came out with a new suspension system at Sea Otter. Um, MTB Savant, you can help me. I know you went to Sea Otter. It's that bike with the kind of like rear suspension that looks like a hook. It looks ridiculous. Anyone know? But man, you can tell what you like when you get on it. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. And uh, MTB Savant just said something about sizing. Sizing really matters. You know, once you get on that bike, I remember I was on my Scott Genius 750 that I, that was my first real mountain bike that I ever like owned. And I never felt at home on it. Um, yeah, the Marin Wolf Ridge, that's, that's okay. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, I never felt at home. I agree with most geos are similar. Um, it comes down to suspension design now. Um, yeah, geometries are very similar these days, but I can tell you when you feel Polygon has the same suspension design too. Um, I can tell you when you do get on a mountain bike and it, it they do feel different. I think it all depends on how long your arms are, how long, big your waist is. It has to do a lot with how you as a person are built and how you as a person have been kind of trained to um, ride, you know, or to maneuver, um, and how your body just naturally moves. Like, I mean, I have, I know people that are just naturally gifted to be able to dance better than other people. Um, and that's because their bodies are trained to move differently, you know, um, in, in certain ways than other people. So it's good. That's going to come down to all that stuff, you know? Um, but yeah, when it comes down to buying a bike, you know, they're very similar and it has a lot to do with how they look. So, all right, guys, any questions? Um, I guess, you know, I don't know if this question, I don't know if I have enough subscribers even or watchers to go <laughs> a question, at, uh, a Q&A or whatever I've seen people do sometimes. So um, we could do, a sh I'll give a couple minutes for a Q&A if there's any questions or whatever, but if there's not, we can just wrap this guy up. But again, I recommend uh, you the Intense Recluse Elite. No, Roberto, I, yeah, Roberto wants me to get the Intense Recluse Elite. Maybe we can meet up one day and ride our Intense Recluse Elites. So again, this is a recap. Um, we're gonna go into Q&A, so if you have any questions, how does it feel to be bikeless? Oh, it sucks. Well, actually, there's, it's kind of freeing because I'm, I'm a married man, and I feel like when I go into Sunday, where are you from, brother? I'm from, uh, I'm from Southern California. I live in, I, li I love the, me too. I love that blue. That's the stuff I paint my furniture. But anyway, um, let's go into a Q&A, ask me questions, all good, like we've been doing. Um, but I'm a married man, so to answer that question about how does it feel to be bikeless, I know that it's not permanent, so therefore it feels kind of freeing. I don't feel obligated to get my butt out and ride. I feel like I could just relax tonight. I feel like I don't gotta go keep my fitness up. Um, what are the major differences between your old bike and the Recluse Elite? Okay, I'll get to that one right now, Frank. Um, so I feel that like tomorrow's going into Sunday. It's usually a family day. I have this thing inside. I'm like, okay, I need to get up early to go ride. I'm like, I don't have to do that. I can just chill for the next couple days. Where's the video of you bunny hopping your daughter's bike? Oh, thank you, MTV Savant. I'm gonna do something like that. Um, ah, oh, dang, um, whoever, uh, I'm missing the comments again, man. I really need to figure out how to go back to the old comments. All right, so yeah, I, it's kind of to answer your question, MTB Savant. It feels very freeing. I'm very excited to just be able to chill and not have to worry about getting my butt out on the trails. Um, so, but it'll all be over soon. You'll get on a 29er eventually. Yes, I will actually. I have. I'm actually talking to Intense right now, and we're going to be getting me the new uh, Intense uh, carbine. Um, and um, we're gonna, I'm gonna be doing a demo of the Intense Carbine, hopefully sooner than later. I was supposed to get it this weekend and get on, get, hurry up and get that video out because it was just released, the new Intense Carbine 29er. Um, but um, it, I haven't got it yet. I am also still waiting on my new Tracer to arrive. Oh, sweet. Justin, you haven't got your Tracer yet? Didn't you get that like three weeks ago? Um, man, I'd be telling him to get on that. Um, but uh, the difference between my 2016 Tracer and the Recluse, um, in the you know in the in the intense recluse elite is that the intense recluse elite comes with carbon rims it's way lighter it it climbs way it's the geometry is more is better for climbing as shorter travel the what the intense tracer has 160 travel whereas the um intense recluse elite has 150 in the front and 145 i believe in the back yeah ordered it in in a black in all black oh yeah that's i demoed it in all black and i put yellow uh, pedals on it 
and it looked like a freaking Batman bike. Bruce Wayne, Tri Salsa Pony, Rustler Carbon. 2016 was so one year ago. Yeah, and that's the thing too. 2016 in bike world is like 2013. No, it, no, not really, guys. And I urge everybody, don't buy into the hype. I mean, these bikes are just not that much better, you know. Actually, they actually bikes and technology is moving very fast. David Pike, evil. Yeah, I'm. I really want to do the evil. I'm. I don't know. I'm so. I'm really torn between evil and the intense elite right now. Um, but anyway, um, I, I feel that uh, that the intense tracer is just. It's an enduro bike, whereas the recluse feels like a more of a really good rounded all mountain bike that can get enduro when I need it to, and it can climb when I need it to a lot. You know, um, that's that's the other thing. Um, and have I done, I know there was a comment by somebody and they asked if I had ever ridden in Vegas. I have never ridden in Vegas. And if you know any good ride spots in Vegas, message me on Twitter, Instagram, or in the comment section because I would like to get, I'm trying to get my people down in my book of people of where they live so I can go out and ride these different places eventually. Um, uh, Cause I, I saw BKXC do some trails in Vegas and it blew me away. I was like, dude, those, tra those freaking trails are amazing. I find the evil following extremely intriguing. I know Brian I, I just watched one of his videos and he just did the evil follow I think he did the evil reckoning he did so the following bootleg Canyon in Vegas yeah so you know what uh, David Pike if you if you're if you live down there come to Apple Valley Kenny hey man I, you need I, 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 okay whoever wants to ride or do anything sometime or show me trails and do some recording or whatever just get with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm on Facebook now too, because I want you guys to start messaging me, so um, I need to get that log of stuff. So that way, when I if I have that and I have you on Twitter or Instagram, oh, I'm going to my grandparents this weekend. You know, we go and visit them a lot, you know, so I mean, I can go up to Apple Valley, you know what I mean? We can meet up there. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely guys sign up to those accounts for sure. Um, the other thing, uh, following is a shorter travel trail bike okay so the following is a shorter travel i like the bike brian is riding that evil yeah brian rode the evil i believe uh reckoning um but the following is a shorter travel and how many if you hey if you don't mind me if you don't do you know offhand how much travel is in the front and back of that bike of okay what's number one? Oh, i just oh <laughs> the bold project the number one was intense recluse elite i yeah uh, i that i don't know did you um hopefully i made that clear the number one bike that i've ridden is the intense recluse elite 110 millimeters rear and 120 front my gosh that's like nothing i mean the 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 following such a aggressive looking bike i just i can't believe it's that small um can anyone tell me what that bike is like listed as like is it an all mountain bike is it like uh do they i know it can't be enduro like i, I know it's not cross country so i'm just wondering what they kind of list that bike as it seems I, that bike seemed very, like you said, very intriguing. I'm very intrigued to try it out. Um, yeah. So, um, following is 130 millimeter. Um, okay, and it's listed as a trail bike. Okay, that's what I thought. And, you know, I, I would be very interested to try that bike out as well because that travel is so small. Um, the 160 feet, I think, is the reckoning you're referring to. Um, dad hat, dad, and have fun. Um, I have one, it's 120 millimeter rear and can take up 100. So wait, Kenny, you have an evil? Are you, I have a, have a nice day and go buy that elite. All right, Roberto, you have a good one, man. I only following if you want to test ride. Oh, really? And, oh, D and David, you're in Vegas. So that might be, hmm. What do you think of the following, David? Like what, like why did you purchase the following? And I'll read it out to everybody here. Um, yep, yeah, reckoning is 100. Yes, yeah, reckoning is 160 millimeter. Um, that's like their like that's their enduro bike. Yep, if you come down, I'll let you test ride. Haha. Uh -huh. Oh, so you have so Kenny, you live in Apple Valley and you have a f evil following. Okay, if that's so, then maybe I got to get out there sooner than later. I ride Greer all the time. Oh, David Pike, and um, you ride Greer Ranch? Really? Wait, Greer? Wait, that's you're in San Diego. Okay, and you have the evil right and evil see i'm getting all these comments right now so i'm trying to get everybody straight um so if you so if you, you tell me that you have a bike or you're saying i have this or whatever just say i have the reckoning or i have this or that because people are uh, okay cool sweet thanks david okay guys so again i'm just gonna alexander chamberlain has the following oh yeah he yeah i just he just got that new uh i think he just got it new right frank 
Um, all right, so I'm gonna just go through my list again of the of the rating the top eight bikes that I rode and what they came in. So number eight was the Giant Trance Two, and number seven was the Yeti SB6, and number six is the Yeti SB5, and coming in number five is the Intense Tracer 2017, and number four High Tower 27.5 plus, and then number three was Santa Cruz Bronson, number two, Evil Reckoning, and number one was the Intense Recluse. All right, guys, um, his new bike is a Pivot Firebird. Oh, yeah, he got, yeah, that dude, he just got like two new bikes, didn't he? All right, so, okay, guys, um, I'm just going to end this with a shout out, you know, um, I have, I just want to let everybody know, I started Patreon. Um, you can click on my patreon. I'm looking for support to get me to these I have plans in the making to get to this place to that place I have plans for the channel that I really want to just start boosting out But like I said like everybody says if you guys can support the channel We can do the patreon. We can get it up get it going That'd be good just to get some extra funding in there so we can kind of I can kind of push this thing to kind of get it going um, But anyway, that's enough of that you guys do what you guys got to do um yeah, he got yeah he got the pivot firebird. That thing was that thing was cherry man. It was pivot firebird, right? Um, so yeah. Anyway, I'm getting so sidetracked today. I've got the dog behind me and all this stuff I got to do. So I got a lot of stuff to do. I'm in school. Got to do my got to do some homework. Got to you know not ride for the next few days or three days or however long it takes me to get that new bike. So um, guys, again, I appreciate you guys using my affiliate links. You guys have been really using those and it's been actually helping me out with like uh, gas money and stuff like that to get where I need to get. And to make, um, I got a, you know, it got me a little chunk in the sense so I can put towards his bike, you know? So I want to thank you guys who've been supporting and going through my affiliate links and, you know, using those. But again, also, um, I'm on Facebook now. So if you guys have a Facebook, go find me on Facebook. Um, uh, you know, and definitely get me on all my different social media so we can communicate that way too. Um, but always try to communicate with me in the comment section. Um, that gets, you know, if you interact on my video, it gets YouTube promotes it and you know what I mean and all that stuff. So your comments matter. So all the comments that you guys just made right now are actually going to go away. So if you guys just be so kind to go in after the video, make some comments so that you know the channel you know the video can get a little bit of interaction going I'd really appreciate that um, do you have an email yeah I have an email um, only bull project so I share my email and stuff like that if like if you have me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or anything you can go there on the, there and I can message you back and forth and give you my email all right guys so I just want to say thank you guys for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it was somewhat informative you know what I mean um, I'm not like this crazy expert I'm getting there I'm gaining some knowledge I have some things planned that I'm going to be doing some collaboration so I can give you guys some tech videos and give you guys some like maintenance videos and stuff like that because I am not a really big tech guy so I need to get somebody in here who can kind of bring that to you guys so you can get that value I can learn more and then I can also give that back to you guys too so I'm all about wanting to give back to you guys and to make this channel have valuable content but it's a little bit different for me because I've been doing this for like riding bikes for a year so I'm really having to cram all this new knowledge so again See you guys, MTB Savant. I'll see you guys, everybody. Thank you all for commenting. It was a really good time. Um, I'm going to catch you guys next time. Again, this is Tony with MTB Drop-In, and I'm going to be dropping out, guys. And thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody who attended, guys. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. You have a good day, guys. I'm dropping out.